So good evening, everyone. Good evening. Wait, I need it to be warm, and I need it as warm as it is outside. We have a beautiful day. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Ah, that's a little bit better. That's a little bit better. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Tia Morris, and I am the Chief Family and Community Engagement Officer for the Camden City School District. And I want to welcome you tonight to this discussion. I see smiling faces out there. I want to welcome you young people, as well as our parents, uh, to this discussion, this very important discussion on education. Um, as we get started, I just want to thank several people that I see in the audience here for, for taking time to come out tonight. I see um, our, some of our esteemed school board members in the audience. We have Ms. Uh, Teresa Atwood with us. <laughs> we have Minister Wasim Mohammed with us. We have Pastor Garcia and Reverend Koto with us. I would like to also acknowledge uh, Esther Pitts, who's who's uh, a beacon in this community, who's still in this community. Um, and she was right there as Miss Pitts. Just want to acknowledge you. <laughs> and the entire Baldwin's Run community. But I want to also acknowledge all of our parents in the room. Yes. But most importantly, más, más importante, los estudiantes, los niños, the students, our kids. This is the reason why we're here. We're here tonight because we all have a common interest. We have a common goal. We love our children. We understand that our children are our future, and we understand that we need to come together, work together to figure out what it is we need to do to make sure that we're giving them the best possible options, the best possible chance to be all it is that we know that they can be. Am I right? Yes. Are you with me? Yes. All right, so we're here tonight because we're looking to work collaboratively, we're looking for answers, and we're looking towards the future. All right, so to get us started, I want to call up our Honorable Mayor, Danielle Redd. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. And I want to thank Ms. Tia Morris, who's been a, a wonderful facilitator, as we have been throughout the city of Camden, having a conversation on education and how we can create an academic environment for our children to grow, thrive, and succeed. Please join me in giving her a round of applause. I also want to thank all of you, particularly our parents, for coming out tonight with your children and joining the superintendent, Mr. Payman Rahanaford, our council president, uh, Francisco Moran, and certainly our leaders from the Board of Education uh, on this conversation that we're having about how we can collaborate and come together for Camden, come together for our children, youth, and families, uh, because it's so vitally important. As we've been working over the last five years to restore and rebuild our city of Camden, the bricks and mortar, in my opinion, is very easy. The work that we have that lies ahead, in my opinion, is rebuilding people's lives and particularly making sure that our children are afforded the opportunities that you and I were afforded when we came up, and I'm going to date myself a little bit, uh, in the 70s and 80s. We came up during a different time and place when community represented the village and took responsibility for the children in the village. Will you agree with me on that? If I can just briefly share my story for those of you who may not be familiar, um, I'm a lifelong resident of Camden. I grew up here in the Waterfront South community. And at the age of eight, I lost both of my parents to a very tragic circumstance. Uh, that tragic circumstance forever changed my life. And, and so in one fell swoop, mom and dad were gone. But I have to say that thank God for the grandparents, my uh, father's parents, my mother's parents that came together to help raise me and my younger brother. But it was not only my uh, biological grandparents that stepped in uh, when mommy and daddy were taken away in such a tragic situation, 
It was also the community that came together. It was my church community. It was our educators. And my grandmother, who's alive today, she impressed upon me the importance of getting my education, not dropping out of school, and failure was not an option. I also remember a time and place when we had to bring our report cards home and parents checked our report cards. And in those subject matters that we weren't doing so well, our parents pushed us that you can do better, you could do better, but they also reached out to get us the tutorial support that we needed to learn whatever that material might have been that we were struggling with. What I'm proposing to you today is that that's the village that we need to, again, revive in the city of Camden to work along with our superintendent and with our district officials, to work very closely with our parents and with our children to make sure that we are collaborating for their future. They are our future leaders and I know within every ounce of my being that they have the potential to learn and to succeed. So that's what this conversation is about tonight. It is a heart conversation for me and it is one that I am willing to put all that I have at risk and at stake to make this chance for the, our children to have the same chances that were afforded to me. So as I take my seat and the other speakers come up, and particularly our superintendent, I want you to listen very carefully uh, to what is being shared here this evening. Also to have your questions and or your comments or, or your compliments if you have those too. Uh, because our, our district superintendent has made some progress in our district and we know that we have much more work ahead of us. But we need to do this together and with the children in mind and not special interests. So thank you so much. God bless you. Let's move Camden forward. So before I take my seat, it is my honor to, to introduce this next speaker, uh, a young man who has grown up in the city of Camden and who I know works very hard uh, to attract resources to our city, whether it's through his position as a, a parks director, he's done some phenomenal work in the city as a public servant, he gives from his heart, and I remember this community, what it used to look like. I want to say back in 2001, it was a very different community here in Baldwin's Run. And the community that you see here today, uh, the new Baldwin's Run with new housing and an enhanced playground and a skateboard park out there. Thank God for the leadership of our council president, Francisco Moran. Please receive him at this time. Thank you, thank you. Let's have another big round of applause for our great mayor, Dana Ray. Uh, it's, it's certainly an honor and a pleasure for me to be here this evening with you to share some words with you. First of all, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for taking time out of your schedules to attend what is probably going to be one of the most important meetings that you will ever attend in your life because it has to do with the future and the education of your children. But before I go on, I just want to recognize our, our fearless, our just phenomenal mayor, Dana Red, has been doing amazing things. And I want you to know that city council is working hand in hand with our mayor because we recognize it's important to have a team to move our city forward. So let's give our mayor a round of applause once again. Uh, to our young dynamic superintendent, Mr. Paymon Rohanafard. He is doing things that are just uh, astounding and, and he has assembled a staff and support group and as I stated earlier, he has the commitment um, from my full body, the city council, as well as the mayor and the leadership of the municipal government finally working together hand in hand to see this vision through and to address the needs of our children. And I want to thank Mr. Paymon Rohanaford and let's give him and his staff a round of applause. Um, I'm going to take this advantage because I, I want to, as you sit in this beautiful decor room, I, I, want, I want to paint a picture because for so many years people believe that things are impossible. 
and more so that in urban America and inner cities because of the issues that we face. But let me tell you, when I came on council back in 1997, this area which we stand here today was one of the most, if not the most notorious drug infested prostitution, murder capital, three two posse, you name them, in the city of Camden. One of my first charges, and, and, and mayor was on council as well, and we worked collectively with the leadership and our senators in, in Washington and our congressmen, and we said we finally have to do something for this community that's been longing for change. Believe me, these buildings were three stories. There were prison cells. It was sad. Well, look around you today, 15 years later. We have taken a community and you, you've seen over a hundred million dollars of investment in an area where people believe that it would never happen. And today you drive by, you have rental units, you have homeowner units, and you can't tell the difference. And that is all in a testament to working together and staying firm to the vision of yes we can and we can make change. City Council and the mayor took on, just a couple of years ago, probably the most toughest decision that we've had to make in the history of this city is dealing with our public safety and dismantling a police department and standing one up. That today, the statistics are amazing of what the changes in creating a safer city for our children, for our adults, for our seniors, so that everyone could be out and enjoying this community. And we took on and we made the changes with the Camden County Metro Department. And I want to congratulate Chief Scott Thompson, the Freeholder Board, and all our men and women in blue who are here for the job that they've done. And also the mayor could have stood up and talked about all the wonderful uh, incentives that she is doing and working collectively with council to open up job opportunities for the individuals that are being released and coming back home, for individuals that have lost their job over the years. And we're creating opportunities with the new construction jobs and the incentives that are happening and that's under the leadership of our great mayor, Dana Red, city council working collectively. So we're addressing the need for jobs as well. But more importantly, we're here tonight to talk about the future. The future of this city, the future of this nation, the children that are here this evening. I can personally tell you, because I'm not here to point fingers at anyone, because I'm pointing it at myself as well, that over the many, many years, based on statistics, I say that we have all failed our children over the years. Lord knows that we've tried, but I believe we have failed our children. Not to say that we don't have geniuses have come out of the city, scholars, road scholars, uh, Heisman Trophy winners, we have the talent here. And we're here tonight because we want to create the best possible opportunity for every young person in this city of Camden with regards to education. And along the way, educate some of the uh, adults that may need it, but in a respectful way, uh, because we recognize those needs as well. So what I ask for you this evening is, or from you, is have an open mind. Look at the statistics. Work with us. This piece of the puzzle, we have to get right and put it right in this spot in order to complete the true renaissance of our city under the leadership of the mayor, council, and all the stars that are aligned. Ask questions. If you don't have one this evening and you go home and you think of something, reach out to the superintendent. He is open. He has an open door policy, myself or the mayor's office. But I want you to know that we are all working together and we will continue to move forward to make sure that every child in the city of Camden 
has the adequate education that he or she needs to succeed in a global economy. And you can guarantee and take that to the bank. So with that being said, I thank you. I thank you for the honor that you've given me to continue to serve as your councilman and my colleagues as council president. And um, I ask that you join us, join us on this mission to continue to work and providing the opportunities necessary for the future of our city. Thank you very much. God bless you. And I pass it on. Thank you very much, Council President Miranda. Thank you very much, Mayor Red. Um, I just have a couple of housekeeping items before we come up. Para ustedes que tienen necesitan ayuda con interpretación, tenemos equipo a la mesa ahí. Um, so for anybody who needs interpretation assistance and you didn't already get equipment, we have some at the table there. Um, if you are interested in speaking, uh, please sign up. We are interested in having a conversation with you. So we want to hear your voices. We want to hear your questions. We want to hear your experiences. So if you haven't signed up yet, there is a sign up sheet at the front desk as well. Um, and uh, if you are a little bit shy and you have questions, you all have comment cards on your seat. So feel free to take notes, feel free to write down your questions if you'd like to just submit a question to us later, okay? Um, and then last but not least, uh, um, before I turn the mic over to the superintendent, uh, if you do have questions during the presentation, please write them down, please sign up to speak. At the end of this presentation uh, and at the end of uh, public comment, we will uh, have him, him and the mayor address any questions that come up, okay? So you still with me? You sure? I don't see many smiling faces, you still with me? All right, we can be here concerned, but we're here as family. So without uh, much ado, our superintendent. Hey, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for taking the time and joining us. This is now our third town hall in three nights, and we have another one tomorrow. So I see some familiar faces and uh, some folks who I haven't had privilege to meet. So. Uh, you know, just to kick things off, I would love just to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I'm not from Camden, uh, but I chose Camden specifically because I believe deeply uh, in the work of public education and uh, the work of improving the quality of public education here in Camden. So question being why, why Camden, why, why education? For me, education literally lifted my family out of poverty and out of persecution. I was born in Iran, in the Middle East, and uh, we were born, I was born after the revolution, and post-revolution in Iran, make a long story short, was very hard for uh, certain minority groups in that country, and my family was, was persecuted. Um, and again, long story short, uh, my dad, who was an engineer, my mom was a chemist, uh, one day, there was a warrant out for my dad's arrest, and we came home one day, and all of our belongings were taken from our home. Uh, some relatives were in prison, my uncle was in prison for a long time and he was tortured and my mom's uncle was executed. And so in a very, very short period of time we had to figure out a way out of the country and we were refugees in Pakistan for about a year and we bounced on other parts of the world and we first wound up in Philadelphia when we landed in the United States and then we moved of all places in a small town in Tennessee. And that's where I grew up. I tell you all that because what I can remember and I was about five years old when this was all happening. What I can remember growing up in a small town in Tennessee was my parents telling me if it were not for the education they received, they would not have been able to persevere through those challenges. And so ultimately, I wanted to be that same force for other students throughout the country. And I chose to be a teacher first in New York City because I believe that education can liberate you. It literally liberated our family from persecution. And I hope we are all here today with the common belief that education is freedom. And we are here to have a frank conversation about education. So just to frame today's conversation, I'm now, it's almost hard to believe, a little over a year and a half into my tenure as superintendent. And I began with a 100-day listening tour when I first started. And this is a timeline, and I know some of you on the back may not be able to see it, so uh, I'll just try to walk you through all the slides. We began with a 100-day listening tour that basically 
allowed us to understand the needs of the city. And what we heard clearly was student safety was the top priority. We heard that the quality of our facilities are in disrepair. We heard that we need to better support our educators in the classroom. We heard that we're not doing enough to engage families. And fifth, the central office needs to do more with less. The bureaucracy was getting too large. That was our strategic plan, and we've been implementing that plan. Since that time, we've circled back with the community a number of different times, most recently late fall, early winter this year, we went to every single family school and every single high school in Camden to have a candid conversation about state test scores. Acknowledging test scores don't tell you everything because they don't, but if these outcomes persist, what does that mean for the future of our city? Today in Camden, about one out of three residents is under the age of 18. So literally the future of our city rests on our young people's shoulders. And so that was the conversation we had in every school because what I heard from so many different family members was that for decades the district swept those results under the rug and never wanted to have a frank conversation about those results. So that's what we did. Today is a continuation of that conversation and today's conversation is going to be more specific about what the path forward should look like. We know two things to be true. Our students are remarkable. And our families, regardless of the circumstances they're dealing with at home, want the best for their children. Those two things we all know to be true, whether or not we agree and disagree on certain specific policy issues. I've had the fortune of getting to know a number of our students. In the top left, Felicia Figueroa, graduated from Woodrow Wilson, and she's a first year student at Rutgers Camden. Got Rasul Hinson, who's a senior at Camden, uh, excuse me, at Med East, plays basketball for Camden High. He's going to college, he's going to play college basketball. Um, you've got uh, a Hatch Middle Schooler there. Um, her name is Zamira Montgomery, who is uh, part of the city, the city championship team on the Hatch Girls team, and Camden High students there at the uh, bottom. We know our kids are remarkable. What I'm struggling with, and what I assume you all are struggling with as well, is the fact that we know the potential of our kids, but when you align it to the outcomes that we have seen here, the student achievement that we've seen here, our kids deserve better opportunities. Our kids fundamentally deserve better opportunities. So, in, in the way that I think about this is, we're not here to point the finger. We've got remarkable educators here. One of the best teachers I've ever observed, period, of all the schools I've ever observed in this country, is a first grade teacher, Ms. Vossler, at Wiggins School, one of our district schools. So we're not here to point the finger because we've got remarkable educators, but we are dealing with a systemic failure. It is a systemic failure in that over decades, there have been issues, whether it's mismanagement or dysfunction, that has led us to be in the place that we're in. And so, there are some who would tell you that because you were born in Camden, because you were born in poverty, your destiny is preordained. That's nonsense. That is absolute nonsense. We, again, know the full potential of our children. And yes, some of them are dealing with challenges in life that kids in Cherry Hill and Hanfield aren't dealing with. But that's precisely why we in our role as educators and decision makers and policy makers need to do more to make up for those disadvantages that some of those students are facing. And that is, I hope, the conversation we are going to have today. In spite of those challenges, there are signs of progress. And you heard that from the mayor, you heard that from the council president. And and we feel good about some of those signs of progress. And over the last 18 months, we can say that we fought to get Camden High School at least $50 million to be renovated. Uh, and we think it's going to be a lot more than 50 when it's all said and done. We now have 96% of our three and four year olds are enrolled in a pre-K program. That's the highest in the state that I know of, um, and one of the highest in the country. And we should all be proud of that. The earlier that we can uh, educate our kids and put them in a learning environment, the more likely they are to be successful in life. And that's why that pre-K number is so important. Our graduation rate has gone up from 56% to 62%, and we should be proud of that as well. And our kids are feeling safer, and that's thanks to a partnership with the mayor's office and creating a positive behavioral incentive program called PIBIS in a number of our family schools in a, in a different program called Second Step, which is in all our pre-K programs. We also have a partnership with the Camden County Police Department um, called Safe Corridors, and our kids are feeling safer going to and from school. But the question before us today, this evening, is, is that enough? Have we made the improvements that our students and families deserve? And I would argue, fundamentally, it is not enough. 
two out of five kids are not even finishing high school. And even those that are, are inadequately prepared for college or a career. Our kids have one shot at their education. So yes, there are some signs of progress, but we still have some significant problems, and this is our opportunity. That's the reason you hear council president say this is such an important meeting. This is our opportunity to turn it around because incremental, incremental progress is not enough. And I want to talk to you all about some specific reasons why, why I believe incremental progress is not enough. I want to begin with our facilities. Half of our buildings, and I think some of you all have heard me say this before, half of our buildings were constructed before 1928. In the Molina Annex, if you've ever been inside of that building before, it was constructed in 1904. Whittier School, constructed in 1910. These two pictures up here are both from 1910. On the left is the Pine Point neighborhood in 1910, and on the right is Broadway and Federal. There's literally a horse and buggy in that picture. <laughs> Two of our buildings were constructed at that point. I mean, think about that for a minute. In 1910, the population of Las Vegas was 30. The average working wage was 20 cents an hour. Fewer than one out of 10 families had a phone in their homes. It's a long time ago. So what does that mean for our kids today in some of our older buildings? It means that when the temperature goes five below, it's cold in those schools because the boilers don't always work. And Camden High, we had to do an early dismissal one day because it was 55 degrees in the hallways. That's not right. Our kids deserve better than that. And there's only so much money that we can pump in for basic maintenance and repairs. That's the reason we fought for additional capital funds for Camden High. And that's the reason today we need to think more deeply about where those additional resources are going to come from. Now having said that, regardless of how majestic a building might be, and we can build new buildings and cathedrals all across, city, all across the city, if the quality of education within those walls isn't what our children deserve, then it doesn't really matter how beautiful that facility is, right? So let's look for a moment at some very basic test scores, and I don't want to uh, overemphasize test scores, but they do tell you some things. You know, they don't tell you about the light bulb that goes over a kid's head, they don't tell you about their creativity, test scores don't tell you about uh, a student's desire want to make the world a better place, but when one out of three students are proficient in, in math here, as you can see, compared to other districts that have similar populations, but we're significantly behind, so that's the blue bar in the middle, for those of you that can't see in the back. Camden's on the far left, the blue bar in the middle represent the the Trentons, the Irvingtons, the Newarks, and Pattersons of the world were significantly below them, and then, of course, even more so below the state average. That does tell you something. And if you look at a reading, the results are even lower. It's almost one out of five kids are on grade level. If those results persist, life outcomes are changed for the worst. And that is, that is what the statistics would tell you. We're not reading too far into test scores, but when they're that low and they're that pronounced in terms of the challenges that we're facing, we're talking about life opportunities being limited. So I'm going to share an unfortunate truth because I believe it is my role to say this. For too many of our students, we have not been honest with them. We have kids in schools that are really struggling. And they're on the honor roll, and they're being honored because they're kids and they should be honored, and kids should be rewarded for doing good work. But then those kids, in turn, go and find out in the real world that they're significantly behind their peers in other parts of the state, and even other parts of South Jersey. And that's not fair to our kids. And that's the conversation I hope that we can have this evening, because that is what's happening. Alicia. Who's, who I mentioned earlier, being a freshman at Brucker's, she came to us and said, you know, she finished fifth in her class at Woodrow Wilson and went into Rutgers feeling, feeling great about the world and took her first class and she really, really struggled. She's persevering, mind you, she's gonna make it. But she had absolutely no idea how high that bar is everywhere else. And she's not able to compete with her peers. She's resilient. Our kids are resilient here, and that's the reason we believe deeply about the path forward. But I do just want to make that point very, very clear. So today, what I want to share with you all about the specifics is that we have taken our anecdotal understanding of what's happening in this city over the last 18, 19 months. And what we want to do now is look at the hard data to then think about 
where we're struggling the most, which schools do, are we seeing the most significant challenges, and then again, what do we need to do? So the hard data that we've looked at, I mentioned academics, we have test scores, we don't just look at proficiency, we also look at progress, meaning just because some schools have lower proficiency rates, if they're showing progress, we should give credit where credit's due. Secondly, we want to look at parent choice. And what I mean by that is, there are certain trends in certain schools where parents have, in essence, voted with their feet. So they have said, enough is enough, my kid doesn't feel safe here, my kid isn't being challenged, we need to figure out a different solution. We have almost 1,000 students in the county vocational schools. 4,000 students are in charter schools today. It's roughly a third of the population of public school going kids here. And we also have hundreds of requests to transfer within district schools. There's a special transfer process. A school like Caddo, for example, gets well over 100 special transfer requests every single year because school kids from other buildings are uh, wanting to get their uh, parents from other parts of the city are wanting to enroll their child there. So we want to look at those trends. And then third, we can actually quantify the problems in our facilities. We can look at a certain facility and say, how much would it cost to renovate this building? And for certain buildings, the cost to renovate the building is literally what the building costs to build, or what it would cost to build today from the ground up. And so when you get to that point, what can you do? It's literally too expensive to manage. So what I'm going to do now is walk you through the schools, some of the schools, I should say, where we're facing our most significant challenges and point out the ones that are near this neighborhood. Now I know, again, some of you all may not be able to see this in the back, so I'll just walk you through it. So this is in alphabetical order. Starting from the top is Bonzel, Cream, East Camden Middle, Forest Hill, Hatch, McGraw, Molina, Pine Point, Sumner, and Whittier. The two schools that are highlighted are East Camden Middle and McGraw, given that they're near this community. Not too far away is Molina and Pine Point. On the left is the academic data, and I know not everyone can see it. In the middle is the building condition information. On the right is occupancy. For a moment, let's just think about some of the proficiency data. In some of these schools, if you look at the percentage of kids that are on grade level in both math and, and literacy, at Pine Point, you're looking at 6%. 6% of the kids are on grade level in both math and literacy. When you talk about building conditions, I told you some of the stories and some of the issues that we're grappling with from Camden High. Bonzel School is one of our older buildings. At Whittier, there is one bathroom in a three-story building for the kids. One bathroom in a three-story building. If you ever go visit that school during the day, kids are literally lined up in the stairwell all day because there's only that one bathroom. The front steps are condemned. You could keep listing off a host of issues. And then you look at occupancy. East Camden Middle, just less than 10 years ago, had over 900 students. Today, there are under 300 students. Bonzel, in the last two years alone, 150 students have left that school. Families have said enough is enough. Again, special transfer process, charter schools. That's a significant challenge that we are dealing with. So. Let's be more specific now about how we can overcome these challenges. And I should also state that there are other schools in Camden that are facing similar challenges. There are some schools that are certainly showing a lot of progress that are in nicer facilities and students are feeling safer. So there is kind of a continuum of problems and challenges and, um, and, and bright spots. So I'm going to be as clear as I can be about what we believe to be three critical paths, potential paths. The first is to continue doing what we're doing, because we're doing that for all of our schools. It's not just the 10 I mentioned before. It's for all of our schools. We have a strategic plan. We're going to continue to push forward. I do believe there are signs of progress. Not everything is perfect, but there is, nonetheless, signs of hope. The second is Renaissance school growth. I'm going to spend some time talking about Renaissance schools. I know some people in the audience are familiar with Renaissance schools and others aren't. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now that with Renaissance schools, we do have a significant opportunity to see significant gains in student achievement because of our ability to partner with an organization that has a track record of success and because of that organization's ability to also renovate facilities or build new facilities given our needs. So again, I want to talk about that in some more detail in a minute. The third is 
We've gone to all of our partners. In the same way that we have partnerships with three Renaissance schools today, one of our most critical partners is the teachers union. We have 1,500 members in the Camden Education Association, and we ask them, how can we work together to better serve our kids? And their program that they're now looking to expand in partnership with us is called the Priority School Program. And the idea there is that thanks to some additional funding, they're providing the commitment of their teachers that we will provide after school enrichment, some weekend activities, and parent engagement activities. And so that is another uh, option that we can consider alongside the others for some of our schools. It's currently in five of our schools today and we hope to expand it going forward. The fourth, uh, any new ideas that maybe we're not thinking about? And hopefully we'll hear some of your ideas here this evening. But what I want to emphasize is we should not be okay with incremental progress. We should not wait any longer when we can take immediate action given the severity of our challenges. And that's why I do believe, and I'm, for the sake of transparency and for the sake of the conversation I hope we have this evening, I want you all to uh, learn more about the Renaissance School option because the idea here is that where we are struggling the most, we should be okay asking for help. We can build further partnerships with our Renaissance School community where we already see families who are happy and seeing better results for their kids. About a little over 500 students are in our Renaissance schools today. And it's a unique opportunity because Renaissance schools, I'm gonna walk you through three distinct qualities and why I believe they are an asset to this city and an asset to this district, and that's the way we should all be thinking about it. One, they are public neighborhood schools. So there's no citywide lottery. If you live in the attendance area for that Renaissance school, you're guaranteed a seat or you have a first right to a seat there. And that is significant because in Camden, families want neighborhood schools. And they should not have to sacrifice that right. The second is they're partnership schools, meaning the district has to want those schools there, the Board of Ed has to vote on it, and we can put into the contract with the Renaissance School what specific programs the community would like to see. In our current contract, we emphasize social emotional learning, knowing that that is a unique need of our city. But we can add in other benefits or other uh, community-based needs into those contracts because, again, it is a contract we have with a partner whom we trust. Third, 21st century facilities. Because of the Urban Hope Act, which created Renaissance schools, it comes with the additional funds, not just to build new buildings from the ground up, and so you can see two pictures here. The left is the Kip Cooper Norcross building, which if you've been on Broadway recently is almost complete. And on the right is, Mastery's, is a, sch a schematic of Mastery's new building, which will be on State and River in about a year. Yes. So the, what, I, what, I, what I want to leave you all with is, and to be as specific as I can be, where we are struggling the most, let's partner with established nonprofit organizations like Mastery and Common and KIPP, have them not to close schools and send kids somewhere else, but to take existing facilities and revitalize them. Facilities and buildings that have a lot of history. Buildings that some of you all may have even graduated from, schools that you graduated from, but currently are not getting the job done for our kids, and ask for that help to revitalize the building, renovate the building, provide a higher quality education. That. That is the specific question amongst many others, but I do want to really focus in on that this evening. So thank you all for taking the time uh, and look forward to hearing your comments, questions, and concerns. open up the floor now for a public comment. Uh, again, if you're interested in, ans in asking a question uh, or making a comment, please sign up at the main table. Also, again, your comment cards are on your seats, so if you 
uh, have a, a particular burning question that you don't want to get up and ask, it's fine. You can put it here and enter the cards at the table, at the box at the table outside. And so the way we're going to run public comment is we would like to get through all of the questions and then we'll have uh, the mayor, uh, our, our council president and superintendent respond to any questions, any comments that you have at that point. And we'll also make sure that we stick around to the end. We'll be here, we're not going anywhere, so you can have uh, conversations one-on-one -on -one afterwards if you need to as well, okay? Okay? Yes. So we've been doing a lot of talking at you. I wanna make sure that you're with us now, okay? Yeah. All right, so this is a conversation. This is the time that we hear from you. You are the most important part of this conversation because you are our parents, you are our community leaders, you are our educators, and so we need to hear from you. We need your voices right now. So, although we need to hear your voices and we want to hear from you, we can't hear from you all night. So the limit is going to be two minutes for speakers. <laughs> We care very much what you have to say after that. We can talk more afterwards. We're gonna be keeping time, so when you hear a little buzzer, that means that you're, you know, we're gonna ask you to wrap up your comments at that point. Okay, so the first speaker is Ms. Mary Jane Temple. Should I just be here? Good evening. Good evening. Hi. As you know, I have three daughters that attend the Mastery in North Camden. I want to thank you for allowing the Renaissance School in our neighborhood. That means a lot to all of us here. It's given us hope and it's given us an opportunity for our children to get a better quality education all around. And I'm hoping that we could do K to 12 so that my oldest can continue in a mastery school and finish her last three years. Just saying. <laughs> I also have some, um, want to invite everyone to open tours at mastery. Um, if you want, I'll just hand these out, but they're um, tours. They're excellent. Everyone should go out and attend one of these tours. You'll get a lot of information. You'll get excited like I did on what you see in the classrooms every day. I mean, you literally, you know, you go to the classes and see what the teachers are doing, how the children are developing and being challenged. It's awesome. I recommend that everyone go, please. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much. I do want to reiterate the, the floor is open to anyone, so anyone who would like to speak can sign up to speak. Um, the next speaker is Jackie Moreno. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. <laughs> my name is Jackie Moreno. This is my daughter, Caitlin. She's in kindergarten at uh, Mastery Kramer Hill. Stop. <laughs> when she came home with her very first homework packet and sight words, I knew right there I, I did the best choice by putting her in Mastery School. She loves her sight words so much, she tapes her paper next, on the wall next to her bed. She studies before she goes to bed, and that's the first thing she sees when she wakes up and studies some more. Um, she is about at 90 sight words and at C level reading. Um, I also have five other children who go to Veterans Memorial. Uh, and I would love for them to have a high school for all my children to be in mastery school. Um, I don't think we should stop at eighth grade. I think we should go all the way. Um, ninth to 12th grade is as important. So I would love for it to go all the way. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Moreno. Next speaker is Sherelle Sharp. Good evening, all. I'd like to thank uh, Superintendent Ronaford, Mayor Red, and um, Council President, sorry, Mr. M uh, Moran, um, for having this public forum for us tonight. I am a parent of a fifth grader at Mastery. And until now, I had no hope. Mastery has given me hope. And like you said, and I've said many times before, it takes a village. And Mastery has brought that concept back to me. 
I encourage everyone to please get on board with the Renaissance uh, initiative because Renaissance is not a takeover, it's a partnership. They're here to help our children and it's being done. It's being done. I've seen such vast improvement in my child in the short four months that she's been there. She's a fifth grader reading on a second grade or third grade level. It shouldn't be. She didn't, didn't even understand the basic concept of mathematics. It shouldn't be. I'm a product of the school system, came to the school system. I've been here all my life. I grew up in the Whitman Park section. Now we're in the East Camden section. Mastery was my choice. I learned of it through a neighbor. We're there, and I love it. I just encourage you. And again, thank you for allowing the Renaissance concept to the city. I just encourage you more. We need it. We need this partnership. I, I reach out to everybody. I encourage you. This, I think this could be the best thing for our city right now because it takes a village. And they have actually bought that. I just can't stress it enough. That concept is alive and well in me again. And, and it, it just, it is. I'm sorry. We need it. Renaissance is great. I encourage it. Thank you, Ms. Sharp. Next speaker is Joe Ferguson. Okay. Um, good evening. My name is Joe Ferguson. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Mastery Charter Schools, and I love these parents. This is fantastic. Um, I really just wanted to do two things. One is thank you uh, for the opportunity. We feel very blessed to become a partner with the city and the superintendent's office in the district. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Superintendent, uh, for taking a chance on us, even though we were just across the river. So I do want to thank you for that. Um, I do want to answer your question at the start of the meeting where you said, you know, what do we need to do to support struggling schools? And, and I want to take it away from mastery a bit and just talk about that question in, gen in general. Um, first and foremost, it has to be, the solution has to be about neighborhood schools. It really does have to be that no matter where you live in this city, you're getting a world-class education and it can't be pockets. <laughs> Second, all has to mean all. So, our kids come with certain gifts and they come with certain challenges and we need to be able to meet those directly. And so we can't have solutions that only, only, hope, only hope to help a certain sector of our children and their needs. Um, the city is in crisis, like many urban cities. And so I hope that any solution that you come up with, Mastery obviously would like to be one of them, that, that you attack that problem head on. That all has to mean all when it comes to our kids. <laughs> Uh, and then the last two points, um, this idea of college and career ready, you've heard our parents, we've, I've heard this ever since we've opened, they want an option past eighth grade. Your solutions have to, if you really want to drive economic development in the city, then you need to make sure that there's a high school option, strong high school options for every kid in the city, uh, and attack that head on. Elementary is great, but it's really about what that 12th grader is going to do once they get a diploma. And so I encourage you to do that. <laughs> And then, and then lastly, I think you're pretty much already there. It has to be about community and parent partnership. Um, because without a community and support and rallying behind their school, it's just a building a couple of blocks down. And it has to be something where communities feel, the community members feel that they can walk into that building and it's theirs. And our teachers and our staff need to feel that this is the community they're serving and respect the community's gifts and the community treasures that are in that, in that, in that community. So I would just strongly encourage you, keep going with the partnerships. This meeting is important because it gets community input, but don't stop here. Keep going and knocking on doors. Keep asking for help. And I know I'm out of time. Thank you, Mr. Ferguson. <laughs> Next speaker, Christian Escobar. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I'm Christian Esbar, a 2014 graduate of Woodrow Wilson High School. Okay. 
and basically, I just want to say that I didn't enjoy my experience in that school. Like, I graduated with good grades, but I don't think I was challenged enough. I honestly believe if I go to college, I'm probably not ready. And I believe if I take the park test, I probably wouldn't pass that either. I'm just being honest. I don't think, I believe that kids should be challenged more in school. Um, That's basically all I have to say. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Escobar. Next speaker is Kama Jean Just. I, Jean Justice. I am going to learn how to pronounce your name, young man. Good evening. Good evening. I'm a senior at Woodrow Wilson, and my only concern is <laughs> one of my concerns is that I'm glad like you guys are making all new schools for like the young kids and everything, but the way these classrooms are taught and some of the classes I've had, they're like extremely boring. There's nothing that like captivates me or makes me want to go to class. Like I had a chemistry class, but we didn't use any chemicals. My biology class, we didn't do anything with animals. We didn't learn anything much except for reading in a book and what we had to write, and reading in a book and what we had to write. And after a while, it just gets so boring, you just want to leave. There's no point in staying anymore. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. The next speaker, Aurelio Rodriguez. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Aurelio Rodriguez and um, definitely uh, we're parents for Greater Camden Schools and we're all for change. I don't have any children but I have nieces that go to the mastery school in North Camden and it's a, you can tell the difference just when speaking to them. And um, one of the things I, I really want to focus on is um, a lot of times we're forgetting about uh, like our diet and nutrition and I think that's another choice that we should focus on as a school as parents. Um, I was a I've been a behavioral assistant since 2006. Um, I worked with several organizations within Camden, CHAMP, uh, Youth Advocate Program, Hispanic Family Center, Covenant House, and that's always been my focus, talking to the kids about health and nutrition. Um, I've been a substitute since 2005. I've worked in every middle school, every family school, every high school, and some of the elementary schools. And one of the things, every time I'm in front of a classroom, who ate breakfast here? How many kids ate breakfast? You'd be surprised of how small that number is. And as the older they get, the smaller the number gets. And I think one of the options that we should be looking at is the fact that instead of uh, uh, shipping food in in boxes and processed food, we should be trying to get food that we're cooking. Because the alternative schools get it. and. Um, there's, 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 there's statistics showing that in prisons, there's experiments where they're giving certain inmates vegan, vegetarian food, and they're doing much better. The, re the reentry, the reoffense level is much lower. Um, I'm a part of Universal Peshat Karate School. We have 20 to 40 kids on a, every, on a given day, and majority of them are vegetarian, pescatarian, vegan, and they're all doing very well, especially the older belts. They're, you know, they're going to college, they're going to creative arts, they're going to good high schools, bringing report cards with good grades. Man, I used to run the after school program here in the uh, Hispanic Family Center for about two years and the focus but when I started working there we had about maybe five or six stragglers that would come in whenever they would come you know skipping school whatever but when I started the the focus was physical activity and nutrition I was cooking with the kids every week vegan food um, we were going on trips I'm the uh, mayor can attest we did some community services with her for the city they were getting up at Saturdays eight o'clock in the morning to come out 15 20 kids on on a regular basis, and and it was uh, I was giving them food that I would eat, so I know it was healthy. And my thing is, I think that's one of the things we need to focus on. We could bring that back, start working with the kids, incorporating more programs that are focused on nutrition, but in a, in the right way. So we just have to have that choice. And you know, like I said, parents are the first teachers. A healthy mind creates a healthy body. All right. Thank, Thank you. you so much for your comment. Next speaker, Alicia Rivera. Hi, my name is Alicia Rivera. Um, I hear 
everybody speaking about the great schools, about the young kids. I haven't heard anybody said anything about special needs. We have special needs. I have special needs. Child. Now, they're saying about the Renaissance School, about the Master School. Now, what do they have to offer our special needs school kids? What is my child going to learn? You know, that's what I'm worried about. You know, I mean, she's in East Camden Middle. She's a sixth grade child. I mean, you know, she's in sixth grade. Um, she speaks. She's like a normal child. It takes a little bit longer, but she does it. You know? So that's what I'm concerned. Thank you. Thank you so much for your comments. And we share your concern, Ms. Rivera. Um, the next speaker is Thomas Rapaki. Good evening, I'm Thomas Rapaki. I lived in the city 55 plus years. I'm a product of the school system, but I always see that our students are being the subject of prodding and poking and studies Nothing ever came of all the studies that we have with the children. It's still a failing system. So I don't think the problem's the children. It's the administration and it's the teachers. We have teachers. I had one very bad teacher in school that ruined me all my life. So I can attest that there's bad teachers and they do affect children. But we need to have some accountability in the system. That is one key. I look back at all the school board meetings that I viewed on TV. I look at some of the members on how they speak and how they construct sentences. They must be a product of another school system that's even worse than ours. <laughs> and uh, uh, to the Renaissance schools, they are our asset. But when they are within our assets, and there's a renaissance school within a regular public school. I don't, I wouldn't like to see it divide them and us. It is a homogeneous mold. And this one student say, well, I'm the renaissance school and the other little, oh, well, I'm a chem school student. You know, we shouldn't have that. I understand that was happening somewhere and we shouldn't have that. This was a couple years ago. There was people complaining. But uh, I think we need to look at why the curriculum is different in Camden than it is in Cherry Hill. Yes. Our third grader should be able to go to third grade in Cherry Hill and have the same books, yes. the same curriculum, have the same opportunity in the science classes, the same biology classes, where they sit there and dissect a frog, like I did in high school. And now, industrial arts. We need industrial arts. I was a co-op student, but I was college prep also. I was one of the special ones that had both best of both worlds. But I think we got to emphasize, it's not the children. It's true we had problems with children having children, but I think we've grown past that. And now, because Camden's the dumping ground for the county and for other reasons, we have the people that need the most, but we're given the least Thank to give to the, the people that need the most. Thank you so, so much for your comments. Thank Mr. you Republic. very much. Next speaker, uh, Mary Cortez. Well, I'm going to be a little lengthier. Um, my, daughter, my children went through the Camden school system, okay. The public and Volki. Uh, the ones that went to Volki said they were happy to get out because it didn't work. That school did not work. They were prejudiced against our children of Camden. And my children suffer, but they're, now they're out, they're happy. Another, public school system. I am proud of my children. One went to Princeton University full paid scholarship. The other one went to Millersville University full paid scholarship. Okay, my children are a product of me. 
and also the public school system, they had good teachers. And the good teachers start from elementary school. So you don't have a problem in elementary school. What the young man here said, let's focus on the junior high and the high. They're the ones that are lost. They're, their hormones are going crazy. Um, so my, my children, yeah, one is a teacher. One works for the University of Gettysburg. Another one, I, I'm not gonna keep going. Um, next. No park. We do not need any more tests in this school. They are traumatized already. I am a teacher. I am a substitute teacher for the uh, public school system. I stopped that. Now I am a teacher for dropouts. Dropouts of all, all grades from fifth grade on up. Their problems, I face them. I look at the problem. I try and understand why they dropped out. I even have illiterate students, okay? And um, you work with that. I even had a, a kid who was, um, uh, he couldn't understand. He was frustrated. He would even beat up a teacher. So I, I asked the, the assistant teacher, may I try something with him? A lot of our students need one-on-one. -on -one. They need that. The special needs, yes, they need that. A lot of our students do not have parents who graduated from high school. They cannot be helped. Plus, where are the libraries in this town? They need to go to a place where they could say, oh, look, the books are there. But they're closed. Why? Because they're in the schools. We need libraries. Thank Another, you, you guys do not listen to the people. Like, right now, there is like a, a, a pat on the back kind of meeting. No, you should have allowed us to speak up first. We can get this information. But you should let open the door for us to speak. I am very proud of the ones who did speak up and did criticize the system. Because that's what so. we have to do. Thank you so uh, much. For not one more, one more. I tried with a principal here in Camden. I dared to. I said, aren't you responsible for your building and everything that's in it and their education? She said, yes. I said, well, do go back to the tracking system. Take one grade, one teacher put her for the outstanding students, put the second one for the struggling, et cetera. She did that, it worked. The tracking system works. The students who could compete with other students of their mentality were not frustrated. The teachers were not frustrated trying to teach a student that knows with a student that doesn't know too much, who's struggling, and then that disrupts the class. You guys have to listen to us, okay? The tracking system works. Thank you and so much she for has time. had a success story. I'm so glad somebody listened to her parents, okay? And I am willing to help you guys if you need help. Look, the ideas that are here, okay? They're excellent. And it's true, it's very, very embarrassing that some of our students, oh, wait a minute. I did one, one, of my, uh, uh, one of my students that did graduate from my course, dropout course, a 68-year-old lady. They asked her, why did you take the course? She said, because I got to prove to my children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, she has her diploma on the wall. She dared to enter Camden County College. Now, it was very hard. The first year was very hard, and she became a dropout of high, uh, college, but she dared. Now, what's that telling us? Thank you so much for your comments, Ms. Corker. I have to leave, bye. The last speaker is Mr. Brian Morton. My name is Brian Morton. I'm a parent for Great Camden Schools. I have a, a daughter in, in, in KIPP. I have nieces and nephews in Mastery. I have uh, nieces and, and, and nephews in other charter schools. Um, and I have nieces and nephews and cousins in public school. You know, um, all of our schools. And, and in that, there's one common thing. All of my relatives have been searching for that magic pill. You know, oh, I heard mastery is the best. Nope, Kip is the best. Nope, I heard, you know, uh, Melina used to be. 
And it shouldn't be that way. That's one thing I think everyone in this room is in agreement with you on tonight. That there is no magic pill. That everyone should have a, a, a great seat available to them in their neighborhood. It shouldn't be a matter of dividing families, people fleeing the city, people you know, uh, hoping for the lottery win in a charter. It should be a matter of choice right there in your neighborhood. So from with Kama and with uh, <laughs> and the other students who are, we're, we're expressing is that challenge us, challenge our students. You know, I, I don't agree, and many of us, I'm sure parents don't agree that our children should not be challenged. You know, we don't keep the training wheels on. You know, we take them off and we say, if you pedal harder, you'll go farther. Yes. So we are looking for curriculums that keep that going. And we also have heard from people that have said how, you know, all around the community there are these supportive services. Right? I remember, and I'm, I'm older, there were three houses. Right? The one I was born in, the one I went to on Sunday, and the one I went through Monday through Friday. We need a system that brings back inside all of the supports that we need. And so I know that the Renaissance Act, via the Urban Hope Act legislation, brings that back. Give us back, finish the job that Councilman Moran speaks of that they started here when this was not a place for children. Our schools are not a place for children and they certainly don't breed an inspiration for the future because Kama and, and, um, expressed that. So, Thank you so much for your comments. Thank you. We have one more speaker, I just learned. Ms. Latoy. My name is Ms. Morton. This is my son Malik Morton. He attends the Mastery at North Camden. I, I appreciate the school. I appreciate the teachers. Um, <laughs> my school is the best. Because we learn math. Learn math. Uh -huh. What about your teacher? Like and our teacher is the best teacher. Really? And we learn it. And we get to go outside. <laughs> thank you so much, sir. <laughs> Okay, so thank you for all your comments. Um, before I call up the superintendent uh, and then the mayor just to make to answer some questions, make some remarks, I do want to remind you that if you did not get a chance to ask your question or to make a comment, please, um, as I said, this room is open to all. This discussion is open to all. So please ensure that you have cards on your seat. We have extra cards at the table at the front, and there's a box there where we're collecting them so that they can be anonymous if you'd like. Um, so please, we need your comments, and we will hang around afterwards so you can talk to us individually one-on-one. -on -one. So I'm going to call the superintendent back up to make some remarks. So I'll be really brief. There weren't that many specific questions that came up. I do want to, I was going to address Ms. Cortez, who I believe left, but to say that we have an open door policy, we're happy to sit down with her. Um, the one specific issue I did want to address is uh, Ms. Perez, uh, who raised the question of special needs students. Uh, her daughter has Down syndrome. We've worked really hard to make sure that she's situated East Camden Middle. And just to tell you some of the challenges that the district has faced over the years in serving special needs students. I believe this is her daughter's eighth different school uh, in seven years because they moved the programs around or she wasn't happy with one program and that's, that's not fair to your daughter and we're, we're gonna do everything we can to best support her through uh, at, at East Camden Middle. What I wanna make very clear to the point about neighborhood schools and how every family here has a right to a high quality neighborhood school, you heard that from one of the representatives from Mastery it is a right for every child in that attendance area, in that neighborhood, to go to that school. So we are not excluding students who have special needs. And to the extent we move forward with these partnerships, 
Again, because the district works through these partnerships, we will stipulate and make very, very clear that all families have a right to that school. English language learners, students with IEPs, um, you name it. So, uh, and mastery to their credit, if you look at their numbers today, they are serving needy students. And so that will be their commitment going forward, and I do want to just acknowledge that very explicitly. I just want to close by thanking everyone. Earlier today, I was at uh, one of our district high schools, as a Woodrow Wilson, and I had the same conversation with a group of our high schoolers. And it's tough. But we heard a couple Woodrow Wilson students here today mention some of the challenges that they're seeing and not always being pushed and motivated in the way that they deserve to be. And you know, we're doing what we can as far as better supporting teachers. We now, every single week, we. Uh, we provide observation and feedback to our teachers. That's never happened before, and you can talk to our educators in this district where that regular observation and feedback is being provided by our principals. But it takes a long time, and it goes back to the point about incremental progress versus the ability to partner with an outside organization that can provide immediate benefits. And so these are real challenges, and I, and I, and I want to just grapple with them in real time with all of you just as I did with our high school students earlier today because they're tough conversations, but at least we are acknowledging reality. And a lot of times we're able to get feedback that we can immediately turn key. Uh, Mr. Gene Justice in our last uh, uh, event told us that the apprenticeship program that we've offered up so that he has an apprenticeship at Cooper Hospital wasn't moving as fast as it should, and thanks to his feedback, we're, we're gonna move quickly, we're trying to situate transportation. And then there are other times where you get feedback that is hard to immediately move on because this is a systemic failure, and there are some changes that take a really, really long time through the district. But I do very deeply believe that with potential Renaissance school partnerships in existing schools that are most struggling, that is the most we can do in the least amount of time possible. Let me say that again. It's the most we can do in the least amount of time possible because our kids only get one shot at their education, and we have to have a sense of urgency. So, <clears throat> Thank you again for taking the time out of your incredibly busy schedules, and I'm now going to pass it off to our mayor to close it out. Thank you, superintendent. Let's give our superintendent and district staff a round of applause. I just want to say how encouraged I am with the conversation that we're having on education um, around the city. I think that the dialogue has been very productive. We definitely have been listening uh, to your concerns, to your ideas, concepts, and ways that we can collaborate, especially around our children of having special needs. Um, just to sort of recap some of the, the general themes of tonight, uh, one was education is freedom. I like to say liberation. Uh, and if we want to overcome poverty in a city such as Camden, the only way to do that is through education, unlocking the doors to opportunity. The parents that spoke today, and even our young person that got up and spoke, that's advocacy. And we want you to continue to being advocates for your children. Whether you're a parent, grandparent, great-grandparent, we need to hear your voices. We need you to partner with the district, to partner with the education providers such as KIPP, Mastery, or Uncommon, wherever your children may be enrolled, because your engagement is important to their learning experience. <laughs> the word hope. Now, hope is what this is all about, creating a sense of hope over despair. For far too long, Camden has been put in a position by others that have caused our despair. But we are going to work against that tide, against that trend, because Camden deserves it. You deserve it, and that's what we're fighting for. A rigorous education and academic program. We know that our children can succeed and can excel if they are challenged in their classrooms by teachers that know how to engage in the learning experience. So we're looking forward to seeing more of that uh, throughout this conversation and in, in the implementation stages. Nutrition, where's my young man, Mr. Rodriguez, on nutrition? We hear you loud and clear, loud and clear, and we have some concepts for nutritional elements that we want 
wanted to incorporate. And so as I wrap up, again, I just want to say how important this conversation has been that our superintendent has launched on how we can best support students in our most struggling schools. And I want to leave you with this closing comment from our president, if I can find it, about the importance of educating our young people uh, in the 21st global economy. And I thought it was apropos, if technology cooperates with me, this evening to the conversation that we're having. But what our president simply says is the importance of having a high quality education so that our America can compete with countries around the globe. I am stating to you and paraphrasing his thoughts the importance of having a high quality education so that Camden students and families can compete in this regional economy, can compete in this national economy, and yes, even compete around the globe. I know we can do it. Yes, we can. And at the end of the day, Superintendent, we will look back and talk about how we collaborated and made this a reality for our families. Thank you, God bless. Ms. Tia Morris, we'll close us out. Thank you all for coming out. It's a very important conversation. <laughs>